Okay, let's raise the big question. Can Arvind Kejriwal's Aam Aadmi Party be a political game changer? That's the big talking point right at the top. Joining me now, Manish Shankar Iyer, Congress leader joins me, Member of Parliament, Yogendra Yadav, Senior Fellow CSDS, now a member of Aam Aadmi, part of the Brains Trust of that party, Shishadri Chari of the BJP, and Jay Prakash Narayan, Lok Satta President from Hyderabad. He too had set up his political party coming in from civil society. Appreciate all of you joining us. Yogendra Yadav, you've launched your party today and it seems from the speeches made that you've decided that the party will take on all existing netas, be it Congress or BJP, even regional parties. Am I to understand that the Aam Aadmi believes that every party, every neta in this country is corrupted in some way or the other? Anti-corruption remains your core plank. Not necessarily anti-corruption, Rajdeep. Uh, this is uh, a critique of the political establishment and critique on two counts. One is, of course, that it's corrupt, which doesn't mean that every single leader in every single party is corrupt. I mean, all parties have some very fine leaders, uh, very honest leaders as well. But the fundamental critique is not just corruption of the leaders. The fundamental critique is that this entire system is an inverse pyramid that power resides at the top, that there is very little decision-making, very little uh, financial powers at the bottom. And the fundamental aim of this party is not mere anti-corruption. As the constitution of the party says, in democracy, power must belong to the people. The practice of democracy has taken that power away from the people. And the single most important task of this party is to return, restore that power to the people. So that's our main plank. You know, that, that sounds all very well, Yogendra, in theory, return power to the people, have, have a bottom-up party starting with Gram Panchayats. I'm sure even a Mani Shankar Iyer would agree with that. But in practice, the fear will be that it, there will be again a top-down party, high-command culture, that Arvind Kejriwal, Yogendra Yadav, the netas in Delhi will decide the future of this party. So will, how do you meet the challenge of, of claiming that you are a bottom-up people's party, power to the people, when our political system is a top-down system? Uh, two things, Rajdeep. We need to separate uh, two things. One is the structure of the party itself. Second is what the party seeks to do to the political system and our constitutional in infrastructure. What we want to do to our institutional infrastructure is basically empowering not just Gram Panchayats but Gram Sabhas empower and basically making sure that higher units in our institutional order exercise less and less and more functions, functionaries and finances, to use Mani Shankaraya's lovely language, are transferred downward. This is what we want to do. As for the party being, uh, being uh, bottom up, you are correct to say, and this would be very fair criticism to say, at the moment it is not, because at the moment we have energy, at the moment we have enthusiasm, hope, a certain hawa, but we don't have an organization. That remains a very big challenge. Yes, I could say that our constitution provides for a bottom-up party, but you would be absolutely fair to say constitutions don't make parties. Okay. So unless we actually make one, we possibly cannot demonstrate that. That is a very fair, legitimate question at this moment. Okay, given that, Mani Shankar Iyer, part of what Yogendra is saying must be music to your ears, that you, you need to empower the Gram Sabhas, you need to start from there. You've always pushed for that within the Congress party, but it's never really happened. Do you in that sense see this new party as providing providing a new vocabulary, a new structure possibly, which will threaten the existing order in Indian politics? About a year ago, Arvind Kejriwal did me the honor of coming to meet me at home and giving me his book uh, or his pamphlet called uh, Gram Swaraj. And I said to him that the day he starts this as the movement, rather than what he is involving himself in uh, at that stage, I said, no, I'll be shoulder to shoulder with you. I think his ideas on Gram Swaraj, Gram Panchayats, are absolutely right. And in, in having a guru like uh, Yugen Riyadev, he's just actually stolen my guru from me and taken it on for himself. Are you, you, you're but sounding like someone who's ready to is? join? You're sounding like someone who's ready to join the Aam Aadmi Party and leave the Congress. Yeah, I'm ready to do it if it is an really an AAP party instead of being a MAP party. It, it seems to me that all that there is in the party as a party is Mr. Arvind Kejriwal, 
who has allowed himself to be distracted from the real agenda that this country needs into indulging in this kind of political striptease where every few days there is uh, yet another announcement of a corruption, there's no follow up on that and everybody forgets what he has said. So today is Vadra, tomorrow it is uh, Salman Khurshid, on the third day it's Gadkari, on the fourth it's someone else. I, I, I think what he really needs to do is not become the convener of his party, but sit at the feet of Yogendra Yadav and learn what it is that this country needs and do so accordingly. I'm afraid the rest of what he wants to do, or shall I say the most of what he wants to do, is irrelevant to Gram Sabhas and Gram Panchayats. And uh, if uh, it's not my business to advise him, yes. but I would... I would hope that he would concentrate his attention on the local bodies and once he's established that there is an army of people down there yes. in the grassroots who wish to support him, then to go into higher politics. But to have 20 people gathered at Jantar Mantar, I don't think is serious. A quick response, Yogendra Yadav, Manishankar Ayer saying that this attempt to target individuals is political striptease through press conferences. That the real challenge is to then build up the party through Gram Sabhas. Why then the need for this high profile media orchestrated campaign? Some would say, Arvind has just tweeted saying, where was the media today? Why is there a blackout? Are you over-reliant on media and creating media hype rather than silently building the party from below? Uh, Rajdeep, uh, Manishankar Ayer seemed to have uh, sort of certain interest in personality analysis. I don't want to. Uh, and and let, me, let me just point out one thing. If uh, what Manishankar Ayer said about Arvind was said about a Congress leader, a Congress spokesperson would have jumped in, shouted, protested, as you can see, I don't need, I don't feel particular need to protest. And that probably begins to give you a sense of how different the two parties could be. And probably some difference in the organizational culture uh, and a high command culture. But uh, in the, oh, the only thing you can say about all the points that he has made is, yes. I can only draw attention to constitutional provisions. In this party, national convener is bound by a certain political affair committee. In this party, high command cannot, shall not distribute tickets. In this party, there is a certain uh, procedure of independent ombudsman and inquiry against even the top leader. Now, you could say these are constitutional provisions. I would agree. Yes, we have to build and demonstrate. Yes, it remains a challenge. But on uh, these, uh, these expose, media and so on, let me just say something very simple, which is, Politics needs to be viable in order, needs to be visible in order to be viable. A certain media attention has made it visible and viable, but that does not mean that media is all that there is to it. Okay, you know, Mani, I want a quick response before I, I widen the debate because what Yogendra is saying in terms of, uh, of the constitution of the Aam Admi Party will seem in contrast to the Congress, which is increasingly seen as dynastical, top down party high command culture, decisions taken by a very small close group. In that sense, he claims the Aam Admi or the Aap party is offering a very different description of what a political party structure should be. Yeah, he's saying it is there in his constitution, but it still has to be realized in practice. My um, best of luck to him. No, but you, you, you're sounding cynical. Program Would you concede that the Congress has vacated their space by becoming a kind of dynastical, top-down, high-command culture party? So, in a sense, the AAP party is offering an alternative to the AAM Aadmi. We've vacated no space. They've occupied nothing, not even the margin. I think it's pretentious to say that, no, we are offering an alternative when... They are like the Congress was in 1885, when 20 people gathered at Gawalia tank. Mani Shankar they Ayer, to get do you to concede being that the Congress has lost its way? 18, eight, from 1885 to 2012, the Congress has lost its way, which is why parties like the AAP party, all said and done, are tapping into a popular discontent against the Neta. You're comical. We've won two elections in a row. And given the condition, not of the AAP party, right. but of the BJP, I'm almost certain we'll win in 2014 again. Okay. I have a string of three victories. What space are we vacating? 
what space are you vacating is what you are saying. Uh, uh, let me then widen it. Uh, Seshadri Chari, the Congress says we are vacating no space to the AAP party, neither the AAP Admi space. But the BJP, are you discomforted in any way the fear that this AAP party, AAP Admi party could snatch away a percentage of the anti-incumbency vote against the ruling party and that really Kejriwal's party could hurt you in a sense more than even the Congress today? I don't think so. <clears throat> See, in the political spectrum in this country, there is always space for every political party. There can be even more, I mean, half a dozen more political parties. Each one has their own space, big or small. Percentage may differ. Sometimes the Congress may get 22% and we will get 20%. But ultimately, we may get more seats than the Congress or the are other way around. Are they taking away the space they that you, not, the, and the opposition no, no. space, which you believed was your monopoly is being taken away partly yeah, by is, Arvind Kejriwal, particularly in urban a, middle class India? This is a very hypothetical question. Now they the part, they have announced the party. You see they no threat form, from them. They have to form a group, then they have to uh, contest an election, they have to formulate their policy towards election, their strategy. There are. You see no threat from Arvind Kejriwal's party to the BJP. <coughs> it is a TV party. From TV party, they have to become a polling booth party. It's so a TV between, party as yeah, of now. It is from TV party to polling booth party. They have a long distance to cover. As Yogendra said, okay. so, so I don't think there is any so threat to any political party. There's a general cynicism that appears. Jay Prakash Narayan, you started Lok Satta uh, uh, several years ago. Do you share this cynicism that, that Arvind Kejriwal's party is a TV party and it has a long journey to become in any way electorally relevant, that the real world out there is far tougher than perhaps Kejriwal or Yogendra Yadav would like us to believe today? Rajdeep, it's self-evident that the political world today is incredibly complex and tough. Yes. I don't think we require an elaboration of that. Yes. But no, the, the whole issue is not really about good versus evil or uh, who will gain versus who will lose. Yes. What really Mani and Mr. Shadrachari and others should consider, all of us should consider is, are we doing the best we can as a country? Is our politics really the right kind of politics for the future of India? I think an objective answer is we are all very concerned including the major political parties, including those in power, those in opposition, they are deeply distressed. There have to be many responses to that. One response is trying these fledgling parties out. Yes. Now, it may or may not work, but the challenge is how do you make ethical politics sustainable? How do you bring the, the disgruntled middle classes who abdicated politics back into the political mainstream, make them partners in a creative way? It yes. hasn't happened after freedom, unfortunately. The second is the poor people have no sense of citizenship. Let's face it. It's all about freebies. Your whole cash disbursement scheme is not about rationalizing subsidies. It's about utilizing this as a word bank politics. Right. I'm not opposing that as a, as a policy. But the point is yes. everything is geared towards somehow getting the vote of these people without transforming their lives. <laughs> now, can we translate this into something like citizenship it's about people understanding their roles their responsibilities their opportunities can I, their tax money etc can i just take that for a moment to yogendra how do you translate ethical politics and make it electorally relevant presumably yogendra yadav the aim of this arm party arm Admi party or AAP party is to be, to win elections and winning elections will take much more than even visibility or viability it will take a sustained effort to build an organization across the country to that extent do you see this party only is trying to set a particular agenda or is your aim to become electorally relevant and win seats in the next elections of 2013 and 2014? Rajdeep, uh, of course it should be to uh, win votes, to win seats if possible, certainly yes. And of course we have to do quite a lot and that's why I'm not making any big claims today. We are tiny, we are very small. Uh, we don't have that kind of organizational might that these parties have. We don't have uh, the kind of resources these parties can command. The only thing we have is uh, a possible national mood that happens to coincide, or at least so I feel. I'm what, sure my other colleagues mood? would disagree. Uh, sorry to interrupt you again. What is this the national, national mood? mood? The national mood, Rajdeep, is that there is a deep discontent and this is not individualized issue discontent there is a general discontent with the system there is anger with the rulers 
with the ruling party in particular, but rulers in general, political establishment <coughs> in general. And there is a sense of hope after a very long time, I discern, you would say I'm partisan, that's why yes. I'm, but I see hope for the first time. Lots and lots of youngsters, people who never thought they were in politics came. I wish Mani Shankar Iyer was there. Mani, I actually counted more than 20 today. There were, there were a large number of people who were not mobilized by anyone, who were not brought in trucks or buses, who were not offered 500 rupees, who came on their own and who said, I want to do something for the country. Within two hours of the announcement of the party, 300 offers poured in from different parts of the country saying, I will open office in my home. I will give up my shop and I will you know, make the office of their party. There's something happening. There's something in the air, money. We must hear that. that Maybe that, it doesn't work for our party. <coughs> Maybe it works for something else. But there's something happening in this country. Manishankar Ayer and Sajjadri no. Chari both seem extremely cynical. But quickly, Mr. No, Chari, you, you, I'm, I'm, you, I'm, see, I'm, you seem to be cynical no, when you were listening no, to Yogi Adityanand. Your, not your not expression no. suggested it. I'm not cynical. What I'm trying to say is this disenchantment or whatever he calls it, the, uh, against the political class, they are now becoming part of the same disenchantment. What are they going to achieve? What are they going to achieve? You what are, are they going to achieve? Achha, you, you, they, have a, they have an agenda, no doubt about it. Yes. They say all the political, the entire political class is corrupt. Fine. Even if you take it at that face value, yes. you are again creating a political setup. You are going to be part of the same setup which is not delivered according so to So you are saying once you are part of the same setup, you effectively How become polluted by it. Manisha Gaya, respond to what you have heard, heard from Yogendra Yadav, that there is something in the air which suggests that there is a growing disenchantment with politics. People want a new kind of politics which neither the Congress nor the BJP can offer today. Uh, first, I completely agree that there is a deep sense of non-involvement in building their own lives at the grassroots yes. on the part of nearly a billion Indians and that insofar as the 200 or 300 million relatively successful Indians are concerned, yes. there is frustration that they are caught inside a glass cage. And therefore, when I hear an academic critique from Yogendra Yadav, I find myself nodding so hard that I fear my head will fall off the neck. And many of the speeches that I make, many of my appearances on your programs uh, share that view that there is disillusionment with our democracy and with our development process and that requires a radical shaking up. Yes. But that is why I told Mr. Kejriwal, and Yogendra knows this very well, that insofar as they wish to promote the empowerment of the grassroots, I am 100, 1000% with them. But the party is not restricting itself to what after all is the Congress agenda. It was Rajiv Gandhi who prepared the constitution amendments. It was the political class that passed it almost unanimously. And to say that nothing is happening is wrong. Something is happening, but it's not as fast as I want it to happen. And I think people like Arvind Kejriwal and Yogendra Yadav will make a huge contribution if we concentrate on that critical aspect. But instead of that critical aspect being the central point of their program, of their thought and action, I think they're getting themselves distracted into all kinds of other avenues. They're welcome to do it. It's they're entitled to do it. And as uh, my friend from the BJP said, we've got plenty of space for another half dozen political parties in the country. But I think there's a disjunct between their perception of dissatisfaction, which is accurate, the answers that they are proposing, which insofar as the grassroots are concerned is accurate, but the kind of action they propose yes. and the kind of TV politics they play, I don't think really promotes the realization of that ambition. You know, the, the other aspect, Yogendra Yadav, and, and this is a critique that some have made after seeing your constitution, is that you are also trying to go back to a 1960s, 70s style socialism, which is out of tune with new India. Yes, there is disenchantment, anger against a particular kind of politics, but economically, India wants to move on a part of reform, which your party doesn't seem to move towards. It seems to want us to return to 60s, 70s style socialism. How do you respond to those who say that once there will be a greater critique of your economic policies, maybe some of that enthusiasm or the mood in the air could change even among the middle classes who are the prime backers of Mr. Kejriwal and the armed party today? 
Uh, Rajdeep, uh, the party has as yet not actually worked out its economic policy in its details. Yes. The only thing that we have actually wedded ourselves to is the constitutional objective of attaining equality, of attaining social justice. And do remember the word socialism actually comes from the constitution of India. This is not somebody's fancies. The problem to my mind really was that the ideals of equality, of making a society which is a more just society, was attached to certain instruments which were actually wooden. These instruments did not work after a point. That complete obsession with public sector, that complete... Uh, belief that everything that the state does would be wonderful and nationalization and so on and so forth. Those instruments need revisiting. We need more intelligent, more efficient instruments and we should be open-ended about those things. But how can a country like India not be wedded to the ideal of economic equality? How can we not protest against the obscene levels of inequality that we see in this country? How can we not want an India where people have education and health which is taken care of by the state. How okay. can we not be wedded to these things? I simply fail to understand it. What is 1960s about it? Can, can if that is 1960s, 60s yes. must have been a golden era. Let, let, me, let me then come back to the critical question. How does a party which has moved, come through a civil society movement in today's electoral politics become electorally relevant? Jay Prakash Narayan, from your own experience in Andhra Pradesh, is there a learning that you would give the Aam Aadmi Party that you believe needs to be done by Arvind Kejriwal and Team Kejriwal if it is to become electorally relevant, ethical politics translated into Indian elections? It will be presumptuous on my part to advise, but certainly there are many challenges if you really want ethical politics to be viable. The first is where are the leaders? The people are seeking champions to take care of their interests on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, the ration card from an office, a birth certificate, uh, a house building permit, a water connection, a power connection, a hundred other things. Things that ought to happen routinely simply don't happen in this country. Yes. Therefore, most of the time, the political leaders at the local level is really consumed by this kind of intervention and day-to-day -day interface. Yes. And that's what most people who want to enter politics don't understand, that it's an excruciatingly painful business in India. It's all-consuming. And nowhere in the world are politicians so much under pressure from the voters, from the general public. And for people to have this kind of a commitment and sacrifice, not merely idealism, but actually translate that into sacrifice to give up their personal lives and do what it takes to do a little bit to improve conditions locally, that's a great challenge. All these parties, however much we criticize them, right. they have been able to do that in a sad way because corruption is the outcome of that. And they haven't done enough to really change the way things are done. But nevertheless, within the existing framework, they are trying their best to somehow address the needs of local people. Right. The second is this whole money, power and politics. Now in states like Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, many other states, it costs about 5 crores for even for a state assembly election yes. to be a viable candidate. Yes. Parliament is multiples of that. Yes. Vote buying is endemic. And if you tell people don't buy the votes, many ministers in Andhra Pradesh assembly, they come to me and tell me, Look, people voted for you, but the tragedy is, A, they won't vote, and B, if you don't spend a crore, crore and a half, you won't even get our pay names in newspapers. Yes. This whole paid news business. You know, there's such a monstrous mess out there. Yes. It's not simply that everybody is bad and corrupt. Yes. So, to, to change that, it's not going to happen overnight, but you have to really work hard at that. The third is divisions in society. Everything is about caste, region, religion, language, and that's why in many parts of India, that's become the currency of politics. Now, how do we transcend that if we want to play pan-Indian politics? And finally, the electoral system is totally inimical to any kind of clean politics emerging in this country as a viable option. Let, let, me, let, let me then put that as, as, I, as I come to the conclusion. Mani Shankar, given those, given those constraints of Indian democracy, would you celebrate the arrival today of the AAP party as, as possibly a party that wants a new ethical base to politics? And would you ever contemplate joining a party like that? because of a growing frustration that you and others may feel with the way the Congress party has evolved over the years? Um, let me answer you by first pointing out that I have been a great admirer and collaborator of uh, the, the gentleman who is running the Lok Sata party from the time that he was in the IAS. Yes. As far as Yogen Yadav is concerned, He's been an intellectual guru for years now. 
As for Arvind Kejriwal, I met him only once in my life. And I said to him that I think your ideas on Gram Sabhas and Gram Panchayas are absolutely right. And this great democracy has to be run. And in running it, there is a place for people on the fringes and there is a place for people at the centre. No, but is but there a place to change the, the system? Sorry to interrupt, Mani. Sorry, is there a place to change the electoral system? As Jay Prakash Narayan points out, it's a system which is based on cash. It's a system which is based on, 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 not pre on preventing those who would like to bring an ethical base to politics from actually prospering. Do you see this system changing or will the reaction to this Aam Aadmi Party be they are on the fringes, we don't have to worry about them. I don't think there's going to be major political changes and consequence of what is being said on the fringes. Yes. But I do hope that internally we will be able to make it a better democracy. But I point to you that when six billion dollars are spent in the United States on electing a president of the United States, there is a connection between money and politics. And there are honest ways of collecting money, and there are very dishonest ways of collecting money. But you cannot expect to get democracy on the cheap. Okay. Oh, and okay. we have, we are a huge <coughs> country, and please, and understand one thing. Yes. The most cynical person, you twice accused me of being cynical, the mm. most cynical person on this program is yourself. You're a great advocate of economic reforms, <laughs> as if that is the answer to I, our problem. Let, let, the fact is that what Yogendra said yes. about economic equity, yes. about social justice, about the lowest people in our society being benefited, these are very, very valid issues. I'm not and sure I'm whether your own party practices work them. shoulder to shoulder. I'm not with sure whether like your own party Yadav practices them anymore. With Arvind Kejriwal, but I just do not think, I just do not think that the answer lies Okay. In producing yet another party, I don't think that they will become a mainstream party unless they accept the realities of democracy. It's almost as if they have to accept the hegemony of the Congress and the BJP and the existing political parties, it appears from what you say, Ma Ma Mani Shankar Ayer. But I'm going to give the final word to you, Yogendra Yadav. From a personal point of view, are you now comfortable with the idea that from today, whenever you appear on these programs, you will be supered as member Aam Aadmi Party as a political neta, not necessarily only as a political scientist. Are you entirely comfortable today with that? Rajdeep, I actually would wear this as a badge of honor in some ways. As you know, I mean, you, you've been a friend as well. You know, it's not a political analyst who's entering politics. It's a political animal who had who had gone to political analysis and who's come back to where he always belonged. Right. So, yes, I'm happy. Yes, if... Uh, if my being in politics makes one more person in this country feel maybe politics is worth a try, that would be an ultimate triumph. And speaking of changing rules, uh, you know, of, of uh, game changer, look, it's very presumptuous on my part to be able to say something about electoral success today. So let me be quiet about that. Right. Uh, but the question is, can we change rules of the game in a slight way in the sense that corrupt politicians would find it a little more difficult within Congress and BJP to get ticket, that Congress might be forced to take the decentralization agenda a little more prominently and take people like Manishankar Iyer more seriously within the party than they have. And finally, can we get uh, some young people, more, can we have more flow of new energy, new ideas, new persons, youth? who want to be in politics. So politics right. be being taken seriously as yoga dharma right. would be my ultimate ideal. And if people like me can contribute mm. even an iota to that, right. my life's mission is complete. Okay, I, politics I think, as yeah, a yoga say, dharma is what, what, what Yogendra Yadav is saying. I've completely run say, out of time, say, uh, Mr. Chari. Yes. Everyone is a gentleman unless proved otherwise. So every political party is good unless proved otherwise. Every the Aam Aadmi Party has to prove itself in the Aam elections. Aam Aadmi Party has to prove itself. At the end of the day, Yogendra Yadav, I still hope you will join me during elections, this time as a politician, in a sense, and a political <laughs> observer of a political party, rather than, unfortunately, as just a political scientist. But the loss of ours is hopefully the gain of public life in this country. I appreciate all of you joining us. And uh, may Indian democracy flourish with the introduction of the Aam Aadmi Party. Thank you all very much for joining us on our talking point. Where do we stand? Can it be a game changer?
Well, there is little doubt that Arvind Kejriwal and team have struck a chord with those who are increasingly disenchanted with the political class. But anger against Netas cannot become the sole basis for a sustained political formation. Once the OB vans drift away, Team Kejriwal's challenge will be to show that they can take their movement across India beyond the gaze of television cameras. For now, the Aam Aadmi Party is a political wildcard. Becoming a game-changer may require patience and resolve.